In today's video, we'll take a look at bitwise operators. So what are they and how do they work? Well, first things first, uh, bitwise operators are just like any other operators, like addition and subtraction. Basically, they take in one or two operands and using those, they spit out a result value. So let's start by declaring a simple variable r and that will hold the result. I'm going to also print it on the screen. So I'm going to say here result and percent d backslash n, right? And then that's r. Now the first, the first operator we're going to look at is the end operator. The end operator is just one ampersand, right? So just one ampersand, not the logical end operator, which is the two ampersands that you might have used in the past. Right, so if I say here r equals one ampersand one, what should the result be? This is not an addition, so we're not gonna get two, for example. So if I try to run this, you'll notice I get the result one. So one and one is one. Let's take a look at the rules behind the the and bitwise operator. Now the bitwise operators work at the level of as the name implies, bits, right? So we're just going to take a look at the bits, so either zero and one. Therefore, there can only be four combinations of uh, zero and one digits, right? It can be zero and zero, zero and one, one and zero and one and one. What we have done there was say uh, one and one, and what we got was one. So that was to be expected, that's how the end uh, operator works. Okay, so if I change this to, for example, if I change this to be a zero, I should get zero, right? That makes sense. I got zero. Okay, nice. Now that's fine, but what if I try to work with numbers higher than one? So if I say, for example, one and uh, two, what do I get? Well, if I try to run this, I'm going to get zero. But why is that? Well, that's very simple. Since the operators work at the level of bits, we first have to think about not the numbers two and one, but the base two representation of those numbers. Now, I really suggest before diving into these uh, operations that you start learning about converting between base two, base 16 and base 10. I do have a course on Skillshare that you can check up top or in the description below. All right, so we have to think about the numbers in base two, right? Uh, one in base two is just one. That's, that's simple. But two in base two is definitely not two because we don't have the digit two. Two in base two is actually one zero, right? So now if we think about how they are represented, we have one here up top and then we have one zero here. And we, if we align them properly, like so, the end bitwise operator, all it does is look at each column and using those just four rules, it gives us an end result for every single column. So here we have, for example, one and zero. Well, one and zero should give us as a result zero. If we take a look at the, um, at the page here, one and zero is zero. That's that's nice. But then what? Here we don't have anything. Well, if we don't have anything, we just say zero here. Okay, so now we have zero and one. And if we take a look at the page here, zero and one is actually zero. So we can just say zero. And well, since zero, zero in base two is actually just zero in base 10 or in any other base, if we run this, we're gonna get zero as a result. So let's try, for example, here nine and five. So if I say uh, nine and bitwise and five, what should we expect as a result? Well, let's think a bit about it. We have to convert every single number to binary first. So nine in binary is, well, that should start with a one for the eight, and then we have uh, zero fourths, zero twos, and a one at the end. Right, so that should be two to the power of zero plus two to the power of three. Nice. And then we have five. Five is, well, we start with a one. That should be two to the power of two. 
no twos and a one at the end. So that should be two to the power of zero plus two to the power of two. And we align them to the right. <clears throat> and let's calculate the result here. So first one and one is, let's take a look at the page here. One and one is, what do you know is one. So this is the only case where we get a one for a bitwise end, right? If it's any other case here, the result is actually zero. All right, so that should be a one. Zero and zero should be a zero. Zero and one should be a zero, Can cannot be one. And one and zero should also be zero. And this is the binary representation of the result. The actual number, well, that's still one. Right, so if I try to run this, I'm going to actually get one as a result. Now, all the other bitwise operators work the same for the most part. So uh, if we take a look at the OR bitwise operator, which is down here, you're going to see that, well, in this case, we still have all those four combinations because, well, we have two bits that can be either zero or one, <clears throat> but the results are kind of uh, flipped, right? So we get one in most cases, but we get a zero when both of them are zero. So then let's try to actually figure out the result of nine bitwise or five. So the representations are like so, so that those don't change. It's just the rules based on which, or based on how we get the result. So here, one or one is, well, that's one, right? If we take a look at the page here, we see one or one equals one. Fair enough. Zero or zero is actually zero. This is the only case where in bitwise or operations, we get a zero. Zero or one is a one, and one or zero is also a one. So we get this number in binary as a result. But what's that number in decimal? Well, if we try to run this, it is 30, right? So that's because we got here a one plus a four plus an eight. 1 plus 4 plus 8 is actually 13. Now there's a variant to the bitwise OR operator, which is the exclusive OR, which is noted like this. <clears throat> and the exclusive OR is very, very, very similar. Right? If you take a look at the page here, this is the bitwise OR. And the exclusive OR is very similar, except for this last part, where it says if you have both inputs be one, both bits be one, you should uh, get a zero as a result. Right? Before it was, if you have both bits one, you get a one as a result. So that's the only difference. So let's try to predict the result of this. Okay. One and one is going to give us zero, as I said before. Zero and zero is going to still give us zero as uh, like with the bitwise or operator. 0 and 1 I'm going to get 1, and 1 and 0 I'm going to get also 1. So the result should be what? Should be 1100 0, 0 in binary, which is 12. That's because we got here 2 to the power of 2, which is 4, plus 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. So 8 plus 4 is 12. Now there's one more operator that we haven't looked at, and it is the bitwise not operator. The bitwise not operator is denoted by this symbol not by the exclamation mark, which is the logical not operator. This is the bitwise not operator, right? And this guy just takes in one uh, input, one number, one variable. We can say here not, for example, not five, right? And all this does is basically, if we take a look at the page, we also have it listed down below. All it does is flip the bits. So if it sees a zero on a column, it just changes it to a one in the result. If it sees a one, it changes it to a zero and so on and so forth for every single bit. Now, five is what? Five is one, zero, one, right? So let me actually change all this. This is five in binary, fair enough. And what should be the result? Well, the end result should be, well, instead of one, we put a zero, Instead of zero, we put a one, and instead of a one, we put a zero. Right, that's the expected output. If I if I try to run this, I should get what? I should get two, because that's the binary representation for two. 
but if I try to run it, you'll notice I get negative six. Why is that? Well, it's going to be more obvious if instead I print it in hexadecimal. So if I say here percent %x instead of percent %d and run it, you'll notice that we get a lot of f's and an a at the end. What, what happened? Why, why didn't we get just two here? Well, notice when I said that a nothing means a zero, well, for not, a nothing here would actually be converted to a one. And since an int, an int has four bytes, that means it has 32 bits, it has 32 digits here, or it should have been padded up until we have 32 binary digits. So that should be zero, 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 and a few more times, one, two, one, two, one, two. This many zeros. So this is our actual number. Therefore, the result should be full of ones. Just like so. And well, if you convert each, uh, each four binary digits to an F, you'll notice that we get the proper result here, right? Before with the and and or, we didn't get affected by this simply because zero or zero is still just zero and zero and bitwise and zero is still just zero. So in either cases, we wouldn't get a different result. But in this case, zero is actually turned into one. And that's why we get a negative number. If we were to, for example, use an unsigned int, like I say here, unsigned int, and print this as an unsigned int, so percent %u, you'll notice I'm gonna get a very, very big number. Simply because, well, we got a lot of ones here and that's to be expected. And that's really all there is to bitwise operators. So what they do is, as the name implies, just apply an operation for every single bit inside both or just that one value, right? So you have to think about the binary representation of each value and then do, do the operation one by one. The operations are very simple, as you notice, just four cases and four results, right? So just take a look at the table or maybe even learn it. You can do so, it's very simple and you're good to go. Just be careful with the size of the actual container. So where you're noting a really big uh, variable here, like this one that has 32 bits, you're gonna end up with a really, probably really big number or really small number, depending on what you're doing. And you're gonna get ones here. And really that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this has helped you. If you do have any questions, do it in the down comments below or on our Discord server. Do check out the Skillshare course about hexadecimal and decimal and binary conversions, because this is gonna help you in the long run when you're dealing with pointers and addresses and many, many other things. And it's also very short, it's less than 30 minutes. So give that a try. And you also get a two month free subscription to Skillshare if you use the link below. All right, take care, bye.